Welcome back everybody, this is James Alcatraz. And today I'm gonna just, I decided to switch it up a little bit. I know normally I like to do like the talking head type of thing, but I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna show you guys like my walk, my, uh, my, my workflow. I'm gonna show you guys what I do when it comes to editing. It's something that I've always wanted to do. You know, now that I've been shooting videos for a few months, I feel like I'm getting comfortable with that. So I wanna show a different side of what I do and that's actually edit the photos themselves. So if you go to my Instagram account, you may notice that I that I have a certain style that I like to do, and I'd like to share that with you guys. And you guys can follow along, um, not exactly with these pictures, but I'll give you an idea of what you need to do and what how to set up a picture like the one that I'm gonna show you guys today. So stick around, you're gonna enjoy it. So first things first, all these pictures have something in common, and that's that they're all shot at night and it's usually shot after it's been raining and that's when i like to go out and get photography um, i like to go cruise around and i like to go see certain spots that i like like for instance uh let me see if i can find the like this one for example i know i love this firestone sign and it just comes out awesome like this. Like I look for neon signs. I look for anything with a cool uh, color like purple or pink or something really contrasty. In, in which this case, it's like these uh, fluorescent light bulbs with uh, this, this red just looks awesome. So I'm going to walk through my workflow and I'm going to show you guys what I do exactly to get these looks. Now, I recommend if you want to try this style is just get out there after it rains and just look for uh, stoplights. That's usually a guarantee that you're gonna get something like what I'm doing. And I'll show you guys what I mean. So let's start off with the with uh, this one. So for, for this picture, what I, I always recommend whenever you look through your pictures, don't, don't just uh, throw them all out. Like look through them. And if you see something that catches your eye, work with that. Don't just give up on it right away. Uh, for instance, like this one, I, I see that it's really dark and you're, it looks like, oh, I can't get anything out of this. But that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to work with what we got and we're going to edit it and we're going to do our best. And you, you'd you be surprised what you're going to come out, what, what, what you can come up with. So with all that being said, you know, Lightroom can feel very uh, complicated. It can sometimes feel intimidating. I know for me at first, I felt like I was way in over my head. I felt like I'll never figure this out. But after months of just doing it day in and day out and just trying different things, it's actually not that complicated. And I think I'm gonna do my best to show you what I mean by that. So let's jump right in. All right, so what I personally like to do is I like to start off by uh, from top to bottom. I don't always start with the temperature and the tint and all that stuff, but you know, usually what I try to do is I try to get it right as much as possible on camera, which is something that I really recommend you do too. Uh, and what I mean by that is I make sure that the color balance is, is spot on with what you're seeing. So when you take a picture, chances are that if you haven't done it yourself, it's on automatic white balance. And what that does is that the sensor in your camera, it just assumes it knows what what it's like out there and it accounts for it in its own smart way but it doesn't always give you consistency so that's why maybe sometimes you'll be taking pictures of the same thing and you'll notice that one picture might be a little bit bluer than another one and that's just because automatic white balance is assuming that you're that, that it knows what it's doing so what i recommend is that you customize it yourself and there's awesome tutorials all on youtube and i recommend you watch it uh, watch them, especially for your camera, because every camera is a little bit different. And uh, so what I always do before I go out and I know I'm going to do sh a shoot, I always make sure that I do a custom white balance in the, in the, like the setting that I'm going to be in. So with all that being said, let's, uh, let's go from there. So the temperature, I won't mess with it because I already got it how I want it here. Um, and then I'm going to work down from there. So exposure and contrast, this right here is pretty much what I would say can make or break your your picture and i know it sounds sounds like a little dramatic but if you if what i recommend is this will tell you if your picture is good or not 
so what I mean by that is just kind of play with the exposure at first and just see what what gets revealed. So since we're working in like a dark with a dark picture, this is when you start to see things start to open up. So like, let's look at this before. So here, all we can really see, and the reason why this picture caught my eye is uh, because of these three stripes right here. These three stripes and then the three green stripes in, in the middle. So immediately that caught my eye. And uh, so whenever something catches my eye in my, in, my, uh, in, my, in my memory card, I always put it on the Lightroom and then I always play, play with the exposure just to see what gets revealed. So let's, let's up the exposure a little bit. Let's see what, okay, so immediately what I start to see is, okay, I see this, this, uh, this line right here and this line. Okay, so we got some cool colors to work with here. And then I, I look over here and I see a U-Haul. I see a gas station back here. See we're like on a bridge. See these two cars. Whereas before, you go back here and it's like, you can kind of see it. But you know, you, you lose some of that detail. You don't see the street signs. Okay. So let's go ahead and up that up a little bit. All right. So for here, for example, I I, I like I kind of like what I'm seeing, but it's just a little too bright for what I want. So I'm gonna knock it down a little bit. And that's kind of more where I want to see. And then here's the great thing about editing photos. It's it's like, it's it's what you want. Like there's no right answer really. I mean, is there a right answer? I don't think so. It's it's all about like what pleases you. And, and, and in the whole grand scheme of this whole thing, it's like, why are you editing? What, what are you doing? It's to make you happy. It's to fulfill your artistic, your artistic void, you know? And, th and that's how you do it, by playing around with something that makes you happy. So. There's no real correct answer. Like this whole tutorial that I'll be showing you, it's just more or less like, it's just a workflow of what I do. Does it make it right? No, I mean, it's honestly, I could be doing everything wrong, but this is what I like to do. And this is what brings me pleasure. So when you see me do things, if you don't agree with it, that's great. Like I recommend doing it, do it how you want to do it. But if you see something that you do like that I'm doing, please take it. Like, I wouldn't consider you stealing it. I, I honestly, I don't think I'm the first person to come up with this. I, I know I'm not the first person to come up with it. It's just a style that I really enjoy doing. So, okay. So after I play with the exposure a little bit, I like to go to the contrast. And then usually I bring the contrast down in these night shots because it kind of makes a cement pop and it kind of, kind of gives the, the whole picture an atmosphere. So let's see. So if we do that, that too much contrast it just it, you lose a lot of the story in a picture and that's kind of like what you do with each picture is you kind of tell a story but this one for example i like to think of it as like it's just a, a, a gloomy wet night you know and and you kind of lose that story here but you don't really get that so i'm going to bring up the contrast just a little bit or bring it down a little bit and bring a little bit more Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like the way the cement pops out. I really like these beams right here. I like these beams. I like all these beams right here. This looks really cool. I like it. And I'm going to adjust the, the exposure a little bit. Still think it's a little too bright. Oh, that's perfect. I think that's perfect. Another thing too that I like to look at a lot is this histogram. Uh, for night pictures, it's a lot less complicated. So learning this histogram is super important. So like we have here is we have the, the blacks, we have shadows, we have exposure, we have highlights, and then we have the whites. And as you can see, everything's over here. That's because this is, we're in a, we're doing a night shot. So everything's either black or it's in the shadows. So when you have, when, once you start getting really good with the histogram, you actually, you, you sometimes don't even look at the picture itself uh the picture itself because like you can just look at the histogram and you know where all your colors are at and and you'll look at it in conjunction with it back and forth and before you know it that histogram is going to be such a pivotal po point of your editing skills so if you don't know how to use the hist or if you don't know how to use the histogram to your advantage I really recommend that you start researching that as soon as possible okay so after we do the exposure the contrast then I like to move down to highlights. 
And highlights is just another one of those things too, where it, at, at this point, like once you get past the exposure and contrast, you more or less know what your picture is going to look like um, as far as brightness and darkness. So when it comes to the highlights and the shadows and all that stuff, I try not to, I try not to mess with them too much. Uh, let's see, like, for example, if we go all the way down here, it's, it just doesn't look right. Something, something looks like, like it's too much of a filter almost. So I'm going to go and mess this, mess around with this. Let's try that. Shadows. I feel like the shadows are a little too dark, so I'm going to bring those up. So essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to flatten this out as a little bit, a little bit more. The history, I'm trying to flatten out the history I'm a little bit. So with the whites, I'm trying to pop them up a little bit. Nothing crazy. And like I said, at this point with the whole exposure and the contrast, you've kind of done more than enough. This right here, this part of the of the edit is just to kind of make everything pop out a little bit more. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Okay. So highlights. I feel like the highlights might still be a little too bright for me, believe it or not. I'm gonna take those down just, just a little bit more. There you go. Yeah, I like this a lot more. So like you see how, so what I'm trying to do right here is I'm trying to make these three beams right here of light, the the subject. I'm trying to make this your eye focus to this as much as possible and bring you right to the middle. So what I like here about this picture a lot is that this concrete is kind of like different textures. And as it leaves your eyes up to the middle, like you see, you see the different textures. And I, I really like that in my photos. So by turning down the highlights a little bit more, you, that kind of brings out that detail in the cement. So a, after doing that, I like to I like to go down to vibrance, and I know that vibrance, like this whole section right here, um, is usually done last. But for my night shots, I like to play with the vibrance a little bit in advance, and I just kick it up a little bit. I don't do too much um, texture clarity and all that stuff. I kind of wait to the end. I have an idea more or less of what it's going to look like already, but to me, it doing that right now, it kind of spoils everything for me. Like I like to use that as like the finishing touch. Sometimes I, I, do, I like to do it beforehand just, just because, just to play around with it. But I always wait to do that last because it just pops everything out that much more. Um, but yeah, so always, always mess around with the vibrant saturation. I try not to mess with it too much because like the way I like to think about editing pictures, is I don't want to edit the whole picture as a whole uh, right off the bat uh, with color. For example, like with vibrance, it, it only picks select colors. With saturation, it's a global um, change. And what global means is that it changes everything in the picture. So for example, if, if I do that, it just, it changes the color in the lights, it changes the color and, well, it changes the color in, the, in, the, in these beams right here changes the color and uh and it's not uniform uh it changes the color yeah and, and these uh, lights up here changes the color in the railing the cement that has too much going on so obviously you know it's an extreme uh example by turning it up to 100 but let's see what happens when we do the vibrance it's kind of the same thing but you see it's more uniform everything's more uniform so that's why personally i like vibrance more over saturation because it's 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 more uniform and it's not on every single thing. It's only on select uh, sources that are supposed to be the main, the focus point, like these beams of light, like this green right here. So I'm gonna mess with this a little bit. I'm gonna take it back to zero, and I'm gonna just probably move it up to nine. Like I said, vibrance is one of those things where too a little too much can can be off putting, but when done in in just a little bit. It looks great. Okay, so we're moving to we're moving from the top down. Obviously, exposure and contrast are one of the most important things to do right off the bat, but probably just as important. And essentially, what we just did right here, you do the exact same thing in uh, this this uh, tone curve. 
And uh, this is another one of those things that you have to master. You have to at least start to understand as early as possible along with the histogram, which you see right here. This is the black shadows, the, the mid, the, the highlights, and then the whites. And what this does right here is that it you, you get to select exactly where you want to manipulate it. So for example, like right here, we're starting to get into, into the shadows. So if you bring it down, it brings all, it, it, it essentially starts to erase all of the black data. Like it starts to bring it down. Kind of like how with the contrast, you remember how like when we took it all the way to the right, you started just to see black and whites. Well, essentially what you're doing is you're eliminating any, any, any gray data. You're just getting all black and white. So putting that back. All right. So for this, I like to make these four points because these are, you know, these are the main points, like the, the black, the shadows, the mid. This this right here is, is excellent if you just want to if you want to move segments without destroying the picture. So for for this, I think I actually kind of like kind of like where this is at. I'm, I might. Yeah, I think I would bring this down a little bit. I, I kind of like my pictures a little bit darker than than most pictures. And then there's this thing that I like to do where you kind of fade the picture. It just kind of gives it like this 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 ambiance, this kind of like misty look to it. Um, when you do it too much, it gives it too much haze. So usually I try to shoot somewhere between 20 and like 10. Uh, but for this, I think I might go down to, I think I might do like a 10. Yeah, let's go 12, I like 12. And then here, it, as you can see over here, we have a little peak in the white. What I like to do is just kind of bring that down a little bit and it makes the highlights pop a little bit, just a little bit. And that's kind of what I like to do. Like there's some things that I like to make big adjustments like the exposure and the contrast, but the majority of the things that we do in uh, Lightroom, we should we should uh, try to make minute adjustments at least until you start to really understand it. Because like when you start making big adjustments, that's when you start to get kind of weird looks. Unless that's what you're going for. Like if you're going like let's say you like this picture and you're thinking to yourself, you know what this picture really needs? It needs to be faded. Okay, I'm going to bring that fade up as much as possible without messing it up. I mean, this actually kind of looks cool, but that's not what, what I go for for my night picture. I like to make them as clear as possible while, while letting the lights give the atmosphere. So I think I'm going to bring that back down to, yeah, I like, the, I like 11. I should have gone with a 10. Also, another thing too, uh, before I even hit the tone curves, after I've done the exposure and the contrast, and then before I do the highlights and all this other stuff, I like to adjust the the i like to transform the, the picture so what that means is i like to, to balance this out so if you look at this it's kind of tilted so what i like to do is i just like to do the auto uh, it's usually done pretty good so now what you see here is is what it's compensating for is just how off balance it was so what i always make sure i do is i uh constrain the crop and then that automatically crops it for you so it still looks a little weird but i mean I, I like how it, it's balanced out more or less. Like you got a you got a straighter horizon, verticals all looking good. So after I do that, then I like to do I like to go in it myself and crop it again. And usually what I do is since a lot of my stuff is going to be on Instagram, I like to uh, make it a four by five. And then here's where you know you're really going to do yourself some justice by knowing your rule of thirds by knowing what your subject is, by kind of just knowing exactly what you're going for in, in, in your picture or in each picture. So for this, I really like the way the eye gets drawn right to the middle. So without messing around too much, I, I just I like where this is going. Maybe kind of eliminate a little bit of the black on top and just bring it down a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Let's try that. Okay, I like the way that looks, yeah. So it right away, it brings your eyes up to the middle. You got some leading lines. You got leading lines. You got leading lines. You got leading lines. You know, leading lines, rule of thirds, 
you know, just your basic stuff, nothing too crazy. You do that and then you, you combine that with, with, with Lightroom and, and the editing of the colors, it, you're gonna get amazing things happen. So, okay, let's, let's jump back in. So sorry. So like I said, we go to exposure, contrast, then I like to uh, align everything in the transformation section of Lightroom, which is down here for me. For you, it might be a little bit different. And then, and then I make sure to do auto. And then if it's weird, um, if it gives you that weird cropping thing, you got to go ahead and do constraint crop, which is right here. And then make sure you crop it yourself. So you know, so you, like, you know exactly where you want people's eyes to go. So you do that. Then I jump into the tone curve, but since we already did, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. We'll go ahead and jump down. So right here, this is where, you know, people, people have different opinions um, where, you know, you should do the HSL at the very end. You should do the color, color, the color calibration first. You should do this, you know, the, the color grading first, the SHL first. Everyone has opinions. I, for a while, had an opinion, but to be honest with you, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's up to you, but also it's more, it's up to you because each picture is different. So as long as you know what happens when you do things in certain orders for certain pictures, you're going to be great. So what I mean by that is, so I like to do uh, night pictures. So I know for a fact that it doesn't really matter what you work with first as long as you have an idea of what you want. But for the sake of this uh, example, I think I'm gonna start down here with with uh, with a calibration, only because it's, it's gonna affect everything globally. So I, I like to think of it this way. So what I'm gonna make the major adjustments first. Uh, so that's why I did the exposure, the contrast, and then I did the tone curve. So what, what's next? What would make a big adjustment after that? Um, the color, color calibration, because that affects everything. Kind of like the saturation affects everything. So I will probably do the color calibration and then I'll mess around a little bit with the uh, color grading and then I'll move into a HSL as, as the fine tuning. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start off with the color calibration. So here's where you start to really set up your your vibe, you know, like what, what are you trying to accomplish with, with your look? So I kind of want a kind of want a gloomy look. So right off the bat, I, I really like these, this orange right here, but I kind of want to cool this picture down a little bit with these, with the, with the lights. I, I kind of want to, I think I want to do something there. So let's go ahead and look at this blue hue and let's take it down you know so another thing too is like don't be afraid <laughs> you know to max and minimize this as much as possible like play around with everything you know don't don't just do everything in small increments because you'll never really fully understand what you're doing because like when you're making fine adjustments like you don't really get to see that change because like let's say you move a little bit this way you don't really see the change in the in the green or in the in the orange because I like the exaggerated look because then you really have an idea of what just changed and what gets affected. So obviously I'm not gonna go to a negative 100, although that kind of looks kind of cool. I kind of like this this look right here. Um, yeah, with the color, with, with this blue, with this, uh, with this orange. Another thing too is I always have open is a, a color wheel complementary colors, you know, that, that whole thing. Yeah, that helps. I recommend you, you look that up. It really helps you create images that are pleasing to the eye. So let's see for this. I think I'm going to take it, take it down to 40, negative 40, which is still a little, a little extreme even for me, but this is one of those night pictures where I, you know, with, especially with night pictures, it kind of gives me a license to be just a little dramatic, you know, be a little, out there with it because it's already a nighttime. It's kind of weird. Okay, and then I'm gonna take down just some of the saturation. Yeah, okay. The green, this is another one of those, like just trying to see what, what gets affected. Okay, so I if, if I take the hue down all the way down to yellow, it really pops out. This it eliminates the orange and kind of starts putting out more of that yellow here. 
So I kind of like that orange a little bit to be more darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up probably there. And then let's see what happens if I desaturate it. Okay, yeah, I'll probably desaturate a little bit just to kind of not make it so cartoony off the bat. Okay, and then let's see. Yeah, okay, so I do like the orange. Just I, I kind of like the orange how it is right here. Uh, so I'm going to bring up the saturation. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up probably. It seems like it's a little too much. Uh, you know what? <laughs> it's a little too much, but I kind of like this. I, I really do like this. I like this green and really strong green, really strong orange. I like this stripe right here. You know what? I think I'm going to keep it. Even though it's extreme, I'm going to keep it. I like it. You know, that's, and like I said, it's, it's your picture. You know, you, you do with it what you want. So even if it's not conventional, it's up to you how you want to do it. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to the color grading section of this. And here is where I really recommend to make small adjustments uh, to your pictures because let's say, let's say we go, and when I make, when I mean by small adjustments, and I, I mean the saturation, because I mean, just look how much of a difference that makes. So like there, it's a little exaggerated, but if you bring it down, if you bring it right there, and now it starts again to give it this cool blue tone. But you see, we didn't need too much. You know, that's a negative 20 even, I think, even that I think is pushing it. But I kind of like where this is going, but I think I like kind of that teal look that we saw earlier. Yeah, look at that. Look, so the shadows, obviously it's affecting the shadows, uh, which we're seeing right here. Remember guys, the blacks, shadows. So anything that's a shadow is being affected by this uh, calibration, uh, by this color grading. So I like to, I like to go to the shadows first. And then I like to go to the midtones. And for the midtones, I kind of want to keep that 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 look going with the with that uh, teal kind of. It's kind of turning green. I kind of like that. I think I'm gonna leave that there. I think I'm gonna leave it at 18. Maybe just take it back a little bit. All right. So now we're starting to get like this kind of gritty look. Kind of looks like it's coming out of a movie. Um, and that's, that's another thing too, when you start to edit things and you start to eliminate all of the colors, like you start to focus on what colors you really like. Like for example, we're, we're focusing on this orange, we're focusing on this green, got this kind of magenta going on over here. I, I, I like that because then you're eliminating just random colors. Like imagine if we had, uh, let's just say we had, mm, yeah, let's just say we had a big streak of, of yellow over here. It just could kind of take away from everything. Right now we're focused, the, the obviously the subject right here are these orange lines coming from this uh, stop sign. So let's see. Let's see what else we can add to it just to kind of complement everything all together. So with the highlights, I think I'm gonna take it to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it an orange glow to it. So I'm, I, I like to do like with everything else, I like to exaggerate. Um, whatever I'm going to pick. And I just kind of go around just to see what, what does it look like if I were to go all the way. So I like this orange and I'm going to take it back just a notch uh, above, probably above 10. So there we go. We're kind of getting this cool atmosphere, which is what we're trying to do. All right. So now we come to the fun part, in my opinion, because now we get to make the small tweaks. Let's see. So we're going to go ahead and go to, we're going to go to HSL panel. All right. So kind of like what I said before, we're like right here at this point, everybody starts to kind of argue about, well, you should do HSL first. No, you should do color grading first, you should do calibration first. Well, let's say we all agree. And we said, Hey, in the order that we just did it right now, that's the way we're supposed to do it. Well then, the next argument is, 
what order do you do your HSL in? You know, what, what order do you do your, your hue saturation and your luminance? And that's another argument that people like to get into. And, and once again, it's you have to know what you want out of your picture. So whenever someone wants to say, you know, it has to be done a certain way, that's a red flag to me because it's no, because if, if you've really done this a lot of times, if you really spend as much time as you should have, you should know that that's not necessarily the case. There is no, you know, there is no sequence for to have the ultimate picture. Honestly, it's, it's, it's by picture by picture. So with that being said, I personally, for night videos, I like, or for night pictures, I like to start off with a saturation because we've eliminated a lot of the colors that we don't want. So right off the bat, you know, this uh, aqua color, like it looks cool, uh, but is it is it gonna be the main focus? Probably not. So right off the bat, I know I know to knock that back a little bit. Um, I, I know the blue, I, I like, although I like the blue, that's not the main focus either. So I kind of take that back. I'm kind of going for like this industrial look, kind of like this metallic green, uh, just orange. That's what I'm going to go for. Uh, although I like the blues, like sometimes eliminating a lot of a lot of their strength kind of brings out all these other colors that I really enjoy. Okay, so purple, magenta, I'm going to leave those, kind of leave those, although I'm going to just see if anything really gets affected by this and not really. I don't think anything really gets affected by that. 